Now let us discuss about waiting lines and queuing theory models. In this chapter, we'll discuss about what is the cost behind waiting service and the cost behind giving service like. Cost behind the waiting time and cost behind the service. So it's called cost of waiting time and cost of service. In any queuing system, there are three parts which are involved. One is called calling population. The other one is the queue and the third one is the service facility. So we'll discuss, we will discuss about different types of queuing models available, which are represented by M bar, M bar 1, M bar, M bar M and so on and so forth. So queuing theory is nothing but studying of uh, wait lines. This is one of the most popular technique used nowadays and it has been one of the oldest technique as well. There are three important components of a queuing process, which is the arrival, the rate at which people arrive to the system service facilities here what about the services you are providing number three is the waiting line waiting line is a queue analyzing the waiting lines can help uh, people the developers uh, scientists and managers to find out whether a system is optimal whether a system is cost effective performance effective and so on and so forth most of the time the waiting line problems are mostly focused on whether the side of service provided is ideal or not service providing can provider can be managed by the authority themselves they can provide two extremes services at two extremes one they can hire many people or many systems which provide huge service facility that means their service cost will go up or they can provide the minimum number of service facilities possible in that case the service cost will go down but there will be a lot of people who will be dissatisfied with minimal service provided Okay, so there will be dissatisfied customers. In any service facility, what is evaluated is nothing but the total expected cost, which is the sum of the service cost and the waiting cost. So we have to minimize the total expected cost. So if we increase the service level, cost of providing service will increase. At the same time, cost of waiting time will decrease. But then total expected cost is nothing but sum of both. So you can see it follows a curvature structure. And the optimal level is the minimum most total expected cost level, where you can get the minimum total expected cost. Here is an example, three river shipping company, they are providing facility for docking at uh, some river. They have, they average, on average, five ships arrive to unload the cargo. If a ship is idle, that means the cargo is not unloaded, it is idle, then it costs around $1,000 per hour. And if they put more staff, they can unload quickly. But at the same time, the staff has to be paid the salary. So the company want to determine what is the optimal number of team of stewards they want to employ to minimize their total expected cost. So the number of teams they can employ is one, two, three, or four. Average number of ships arriving per shift is like five. Average time each ship waits to be unloaded. If it is one steward or steam, then they'll be they have to wait for seven hours. If it is two, then we have to wait for four hours. If there is three stewardess teams, then they have to wait for three hours and so on and so forth. And total ship hours lost per shift. So you have to just multiply the total hours, average hours they are waiting, time, multiply by the number of ships, average number. So just multiply, seven into five is 35, five into four is 20 and so on and so forth. Similar, what is the cost per hour per ideal ship, which is like $1,000, it's given in any scenario. Then you multiply the total shift hours of the ship lost, multiplied by $1,000 each. So it will be 35000 in the case of uh, one team of stewardess, 20000 if there is uh, two stewardess teams, 15000 and so on and so forth. And the salary of each team, a single team is given $6,000. So if it is two team, it will be 12000 If it is three, it will be 18000 and so on. So add the salary plus the, the, the amount which is due to waiting line, okay? So 35 plus 6 which is 41, 20 plus 12 which is 12 and so on and so forth. So in the total expected cost, the minimum most one is optimal cost. So you go for that choice, meaning the company goes for two stewardess teams, which will be cost effective for the company. In the case of queuing system, there are three main parts. One is arrival, how many systems or how many things enter into the system it is sometimes called as calling population the second one is the queue or the waiting list number three is the service facility based on this all these components have certain characteristics which can be modeled using mathematical queuing model if you talk about the arrival characteristics 
Number one, we will look at the size of the calling population, whether it is unlimited or infinite-like, or limited or finite-like. So here, if there is, let's say, you have a poll booth or you have a supermarket, people come to the market, the number of customers who come to the market is a small amount compared to the total population, right? So then this is called, size of the calling population is called unlimited. But instead, if you have, like in a company, there are only eight machines that can be handled with repairing or maintenance, whatever. So the number of machines is eight. So this is limited. It's a finite population. So you can have limited, unlimited, both types. Pattern of arrival. Arrival pattern can follow a pattern, some method, some pattern it could follow, or it can be random. If the arrival is random, then generally it is represented using Poisson distribution. Arrival characteristics, if you talk about the behavior of the arrival, behavior of arrivals, customers normally come into the queue. Most of the time we expect them to be patient. If they are in the queue, they will wait until they are serviced. They do not switch lines, they do not go out. There is another case which is called bulking. Bulking meaning some customers come, look at the service, they say, oh, it's a huge queue. So they don't want to join the queue, they just go. This is called bulking. Third one is called reneging. Here a customer comes in waits in the queue for some time, then he becomes impatient, then he says, oh, this is taking too long, and he leaves the queue, right, without handling, without getting his service being done. That is called renating. Waiting line characteristics, it can be either limited or unlimited. If you are talking about number of tables in a restaurant, that is limited number. But if you talk about number of cars that can be in a toll booth, it can be unlimited, okay. So queuing di discipline refers to the way you provide service. Most of the time it is first in, first out. There can be others, but many a times um, we apply FIFO concept. Once they are in the queue, it is always first in, first out. Service facility. If you talk about the service facility, you can have one single server serving everybody. That is called single channel system. Or you can have multiple servers, but all of them are fed by a single uh, common waiting line. One line you wait and then you can go into any counter. This is like multi-channel systems. And patterns of service time, that is what is called single phase system. Every customer will get served by one single server and then they go. Or you have multi-phase system, a customer comes in, he will do some job in one counter, then go to another counter, meaning does his job in different, more than one servers. That is called multi-phase system. So here is a diagram here. You can see single channel, they arrive and then they do one job and then they go. This is single channel, single phase system. Single channel, multiple phase, they arrive in one go. They have first job, then go to the next uh, channel and wait, then go and do the second job. So it's like multi-phase. Two types of services has to be provided. Okay, then you can have multiple channel, multi-channel, single phase. People come in, but then there are different facilities. You only do job at any one of them, not all the three. So you just go to one of them and continue. This is multi-channel, single phase. You can also have what is called multi-channel, multi-phase. So you will have to go through different channels and for each level you will have like one service, then go to the next level, next service and so on and so forth. Then you are talking about service time distribution. Service time, if you are given a job, you can do the job like constant time, every two minutes you need to finish the job or maybe random. Constant time is mostly machine controlled, okay. Random, if it is a randomly distributed, then normally it follows negative exponential polynomial probability distribution. So to do this, analyst has to observe, collect and plot all the service uh, data they get and then they have to match it with some distribution. So to identify all these models, they have what is called Kendall notation. They want to represent them in Kendall notation. This notation includes pattern of arrival, service time distribution and number of channels. So you can see you will represent, first one is the arrival distribution, second one is the service time distribution, number three is the number of service channels open. And they are represented by some numbers, some letters, M means poison distribution, D means constant or deterministic, G means general distribution for which you know the mean and the variance. So if you have a single channel model with poison arrival and exponential service time, then you represent it as M bar M bar 1. If there are two channels, then it is M bar M bar 2. If you have a three-channel system with poison arrival and uh, constant service, so M bar D bar 3. If it's a four-channel system with poison arrival, normally distributed, then M bar G bar 4. Okay, and there are cases where you can also add more terms, not only these three terms, you can also add 
maximum number in the system, population size and so on. If those two items or others are omitted, then it is assumed there is no limit on the Q length and there is no limit on the population size. Let us start with single channel model, poison arrivals, exponential service time. Single channel, that is why you have one at the end and exponential service M in the middle and poison arrival M in the first. So, M bar, M bar 1. So, here there are some assumptions. Anything that arrive, they will be served on FIFO basis. There is no bulking, no range. People cannot come and see, oh, there is nobody, the service is too slow, go. This is not possible. Renaging, joining a queue and then halfway you go out. This is also not possible. Arrivals of independent of each other. So, no two arrivals are dependent on each other. They just come. But there is an average number of arrival, which is called as the arrival rate with over time. Okay, this is constant value. Arrivals follow a Poisson distribution and come from an infinite, which is unlimited, uh, size of the population. Then service times are variable and also independent, but the average is known. Service time follow a negative exponential distribution. Average service rate should be greater than the average arrival rate. So these are our assumptions like. If these assumptions are met, then we can develop a series of equations that could be used to solve the queuing operating characteristics. So let us start with lambda. It represents mean number of arrivals per time period, which is the arrival rate. So, always watch out that time period should be very clear to you. And then mu, which is the mean number of customers or units served, this is a service rate per time period. Again, remember the time period of the arrival and the service should be the same. Otherwise, we cannot use them in the same equations like. So, if you want to find average number of customers or units in the system, so people in the system like, then L equal to lambda by 1, uh, lambda by mu minus lambda. If you want to find average time a customer spends in the system, the time, not the number, time, 1 by mu minus lambda. If you want to find average number of customers in the queue, then it will be LQ, which is lambda square by mu into mu minus lambda. If you are finding average time a customer spends waiting in the queue, which is WQ, lambda by mu into mu minus lambda. If you want to find the utilization factor, okay, Utilization factor, how much you are utilizing the service like, which is called as rho. Rho is equal to lambda by mu. And you can also calculate percentage idle time. How long? Probability that no one is in the system. So, the system is idle. That is P0, 1 minus lambda by mu. So, if you can see, it is 1 minus rho is equal to P0. Probability that the number of customers in the system is greater than K, that means P of n greater than k, which is lambda by q into k plus power k plus 1. So, if you are given a uh, scenario like Arnold, he is a company mechanic, he can install uh, mufflers at a rate of 3 per hour and customers arrive at 2 per hour. So, lambda is equal to 2, again you can see both of them have per hour as a time period and mu equal to 3 cars, right. And then if you want to find L, you can calculate. And just apply in the equations, you get the answers like. So, for each one, LQ, WQ, rho, P0, all this can be applied. If you want to find probability of more than K cars in the system, you can start with 0 until 7 and you can calculate. Remember, probability of 0 is nothing but 1 minus P0. You just get the value here, okay. So, um, this is how you want to do like. So, that means N greater than 0, meaning 0 has to be excluded. So, you just must subtract the 0 value. P0 is the probability of 0 items in the system, right. So, 1 minus P0 will get the value. And if you find, for example, here number K equal to 3, that means there is a 19.8 percent chance that you have more than 3 cars in the system. So, it is 0 0.198. You can solve them using some software tools like. And if suppose in this shop they want to also apply the cost into the picture, they want to calculate the economic uh, situation of this system, okay. The total service cost will be equal to number of channels into cost per channel, okay, M into CS. M is the number of channel, CS is the service cost or the labor cost. Then you want to find the total waiting cost, total time spent waiting by all arrivals into cost of waiting. So you want to find how much time they are spending. So it's like number of arrivals into average wait per arrival into CW, which is the cost of waiting. So cost of waiting will be lambda W into CW. And then if you want to find uh, the waiting time in a queue, just change W into WQ, okay. Now lambda into WQ into CW, which is the cost of waiting. WQ is the um, uh, arrival uh, average waiting in the queue, basically. 
Then if you want to find the total cost, you just have to sum uh, service cost plus the waiting cost. So um, it is MCS plus lambda WCW. It, if it is based on the Q, then it is MCS plus lambda WQCW, where lambda is the arrival time and uh, mu is the service time. They are all in the same time period. So here in this scenario, you want to find the waiting cost. If the waiting uh, cost is given, CW is given as 50 per hour. So just multiply in eight hours per day. So eight into two, which is lambda, the arrival rate. WQ is two by three from the previous equation into 50, you get the value. If the mechanic service is charged, is charged like is paid $15 per hour. So you want to find the service cost eight hours a day. So eight into M, number of mechanics only one now, CS cost the service cost is 15 so you get the value add these two cost waiting cost and the service cost you get 653 dollars 33 cents that's a total cost and if the guy the company guy he thinks of hiring a different mechanic who can do the job faster so here the arrival rate is two again same but the service rate is increased from three it has become four now again he will calculate the l value number of cars in the system and average uh, time a car spends in the system and then number of cards in line in the um, queue and average waiting time in the queue, percentage the system is busy, probably that there's no cars in the system. You can also find for different number of cars. Here again, if you want to find the total cost of the system, you will multiply. Waiting cost is 8 into WQ is given and cost of um, 8 into lambda is 2, WQ is given and uh, CW is 50, you get the value. And the new mechanic charges more, not $15 like before, now he charges $20. So you just multiply, you get the value. And this is the amount you get. So instead of the first guy, if you apply this guy, the cost of the system has gone down. Previous time it was 600 something, now it is 300 something, it has gone down. Now the shop guy, he thinks, okay. Um, total time spent waiting for 16 customers per day, okay. Arrival rate is two, number of working hours is eight. So you have like eight into 16. So 16 cars per day. And every car is waiting two by three hours per uh, per car. So every hour, every car is waiting two by three hours, and you will get ten point six seven. But if you go for the second approach with a faster mechanic, the waiting time is one by four per car, one by four hours, quarter an hour. Multiply by sixteen cars, you get four hours. So also you are saving some good money because previous time with the first mechanic it is six fifty three, the second mechanic is two sixty. So you are saving two ninety three dollars if you go for the second guy. Then you might, you might always think reducing the waiting cost is the only way to reduce the cost. Not like this. Sometimes there are also other ways like, okay, reducing the unit waiting cost will reduce the total waiting cost. And this might be less expensive to achieve sometime, okay. Sometimes it's easy to do that. Sometimes instead we can put some kind of TV, some advertisements or something which people can engage themselves, right, so that the waiting cost will reduce much. Why? Because people don't think they are wasting their time. Then the cost is reduced. People will not be dissatisfied. They will read something. They will keep them busy. Let's take the next scenario. Maximum multi-channel model. So which is multiple channels. So this is why you say M at the small M at the end. And the others are the same. Service time, which is exponential service time, which is M also. Poison distribution. Poison arrival, which is the first M here. So here the average is um, arrival time is lambda. Average service rate is mu of each channel. Number of channels open is M. Again, you follow the same like before. In the case of single channel, we follow the same. Arrivals follow poison distribution. Service follow exponential distribution. And then service is uh, first come, first serve. And all servers are assumed to be doing the job at the same rate. Same assumptions, no difference. Here also you can calculate them. Here are the equations given. Probability of zero customers in the system is given for it. But there's a condition. M into mu should be greater than, greater than lambda. And then average number of customers or units in the system, which is L, average time uh, a unit spends in the waiting line or being served in the system itself. So whenever you use the word system, it means it's both being served and the queue, both are considered. And LQ, it is um, customers, average number of customers in the queue. Um, WQ, a time um, a customer is waiting in the queue like, so it is W minus one minus mu. Average number of customers or units in the, um, line waiting for service which is basically the utilization rate and you want to apply here the company decides to go for a second worker who works at a rate uh, same rate as the first one service rate is three three per hour but now m becomes two not one anymore so you apply it into the equations given to you and you get all the values like 
So you can see if you have one single mechanic whose service rate is three hours, three cars per hour, two mechanics, both of them serving at three hours, per, three cars per hour, or one fast mechanic who serves at four cars per hour. So the values are given here, P0, L, W, WQ, and so on and so forth. So if you, if you add the second service and you, by, by doing this, you reduce the waiting time, but this will increase the service cost because you need to pay the second guy also. So let's see how much it is. Waiting time, uh, total daily waiting time, 8 into lambda is 2, WQ is given and CW is given, you get the value. So waiting cost has gone down, seriously. If you look at the service cost, it is 8 hours per day into M is 2 because you have two mechanics. CS is the charge, $15. So you get 240. If you add them, it is 273.36. So basic idea now, you can go with three options. Number one option with one mechanic serving at uh, three cars per hour or two mechanics, both of them serving at three cars per hour or you can go for a uh, four mechanic system, right? So if you have um, three, three hours, three cars per hour with one single mechanic, the slow guy, he will charge, the cost will be $653 approximately. If you go with uh, the faster guy, he will be like 360. But if you open a second service, okay, there'll be two people serving, right, then you save some good amount of money, okay, because it's only 273. If you compare with the um, slow air mechanic, one single mechanic, M bar, M bar one with slow mechanic, you will save like $380. But if you go for, let's say, uh, the faster mechanic, you still save some $87. So it's good to go for two mechanics. They work at service rate is same, which is three hour, three cars per hour. You can solve these things also using some tools like. Next, you can have what is called the constant service time. Constant service time, meaning they, they process it at constant time. It's not uh, averaged values. Here again, you can calculate the values. You represent it as M bar, D bar one model. M is a poison arrival. D is a constant service time. One is a only one single channel. So you can calculate LQ, WQ, L, W, and W. And you will find these are lesser values compared to the variable service time, okay? So both the average Q length and the average waiting time are half compared to the previous ones. All right, so you can see here, average Q, LQ is the lambda square by two mu. So it's half the previous one. Mu into mu minus lambda. Similar, the waiting time in the Q also is half of the previous ones. And you can find the average number of customers, L equal to LQ by lambda by Q, average time in the system, WQ plus one by Q, one by mu. Here is a company, example given to you. These guys, they collect um, aluminum cans and glass bottles. The truck arrives, arrives at an average rate of eight per hour. So this is following poison distribution. Truck drivers wait for 15 minutes before they can empty their load. Drivers and trucks cost so many hours for waiting in the queue. So per hour, they have to pay $60 if they're waiting in the queue. And if you replace the system with an automated computer machine, compactor machine, which can do the truckload processing quickly, it can process 12 per hour at a rate of 12. And the computer compactor will charge like $1.3 per truck unloaded. So if you want to calculate here, um, current waiting cost per trip. So this is the waiting cost per trip. And you can see the dollar is also given. This is the waiting time, half a quarter an hour multiply by 60, so per trip you are charged like $15. The new system, there will be 8 trucks available, but the processing will be 12 trucks because here you can see 12 per hour, which is automated system process at 12 per hour. Again, you apply WQ, 8 into, so this is 2 into um, la, mu into mu minus lambda, you get 1 by 12 of an hour. This is the waiting time in the queue. So multiply it by 60, you get this. So if you use the automated system, you save like $10 per trip. Right, uh, cost of the new system is also given. So if you subtract the cost, your total saving will be, net saving will be $7 per trip. You can again solve them using some software slide. Next, you have what is called finite population model. This is M bar M bar one with finite pop source. Here, the potential customers is limited. Okay, there's a dependent relationship between the length of the queue and the arrival rate. Here, there are some assumptions. There's only one single server. The population of the units which are asking for the service, which are requiring the service is finite. Arrivals follows the point of poison distribution and the service times are exponential distributed. Customers are always served as first come, first serve basis. Here, lambda is the mean arrival time. Mu is the mean service rate. Mean arrival rate, mean service rate. N is the size of the population. Because it's finite, so N is given. Again, here you can calculate probability that the system is empty. 
you can calculate. And you can find out average length of the queue, which is LQ, using the formula given here. Average number of customers can also be found. Average waiting time in the queue, average time in the system, and probability of that n units are there in the system like. So here is an example, a department of commerce, they have like five printers, and uh, each need to be re repaired every 20 hours of work, okay? So five printers is the population that is given. So capital N is equal to five. Breakdown follows a Poisson distribution and technicians can um, do some service to a printer in an average of about two hours following an exponential distribution, okay? So services uh, following exponential distribution. So lambda is one over 20 because arrival rate will be every 20 hours one will come. So 0 0.05 printer per hour and uh, service rate every two hours they can serve one. So it's 0.5 printer per hour. Again, you apply this into the equation given to you. Capital N is given, so you can apply it, which is 5. And uh, there's only one technician on duty, so M is equal to 1, which is given also. So you find P0, you, find, you can find LQ, L, WQ, W, and so on and so forth. So the printer, if the printer downtime costs so much per hour, and the cost of the technician is like $25 per hour, total cost will be. So you can see how long the printer will be down, which is here. 0.64, which is the point given here, right? And then you multiply it with the cost per downtime hour plus the technician cost, you get the rate. So this will be your total hourly cost you will spend. There are some general information which have to be given. Whenever a system is starting, a system enters, finally enters into what is called steady state condition. Initially, it will be inside what is called as a transient state, initial transient state, before things become stabilized. Okay, initially it will be a transient state. Like for example, if you open a shop early in the morning, like a college opening time, there will be many cars coming, many students coming and so on. Okay, so that is like the transient state. Then it will be stabilized. When it is stabilized, it is called a steady state. Okay, then there will be the service rate, arrival rate will be stable in the steady state approach. And there's also little Little's flow equation, which is L equal to lambda into W or LQ equal to lambda into WQ. There's a third condition. Average time in the system is equal to average time in the queue plus average servicing time or time receiving service. So if you are in the system means either you are in the queue or you are being currently served. Remember these three formulas can be used to find out those uh, variables which are not given to you. Unknown variables can be found or characteristics can be found. They can be applied to all the equations as, as the all scenarios before except the final population, finite population model. M bar M bar 1 with finite source, you cannot apply these things. And um, there are lots of variants, uh, variations from the basic queuing model which you have studied. Service time uh, to be normal uh, probability distribution instead of exponential distribution. And you can solve all these things using some simulations and you can find some answers like. Okay, so um, you can go for simulation if, you know, there can only be a poor approximation that can be found by the normal systems like. So computer simulation should be used when standard queuing models provide only a poor approximation of the actual service model. And that ends this chapter.